Well, hello there, everyone. Um, it's nice to be with you again. And I must say, I'm really excited to have Derek Bros with us from the Conscious Resistance uh, Movement. Um, Derek, it's really good of you to put time aside for us today. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's a beautiful day and we're getting ready to talk about some exciting things. So I'm doing very well. Indeed, indeed. Now, um, for the members of the Full Circle Project, um, if you've been paying attention, then you'll see that there's um, a really good post up from Derek speaking about um, freedom cells. And I can't encourage you enough to listen to that. It's 15 minutes and um, very uh, intense information there. Really valuable, I feel, for people who were working in their community to make a, a major difference in striving to break free of um, this this uh, this control system. So, um, Derek, I don't know if you'd like to, to, to just simplify that for us, give us a taste of what freedom cells, obviously we're talking, um, we're, t we're talking blood cells and not jail cells, right? Let's establish that. <laughs> Yeah, we're talking, you know, cells building building a new body. Where, where the cells, the tiny cells, that are going to create something brand new. It's, you know, that's the concept behind it. And, um, so, freedom cells. First, thank you for letting me, you know, introduce this idea to a new audience, and hopefully, some of the audience is familiar with the video, the talk I already gave, uh, and is ready to hear more about some background and how we can move forward. But generally, what freedom cells are, what we've been defining them. Me and a few others who are working on those concepts are peer-to-peer -peer decentralized groups. Uh, that individuals and communities can come together and focus on creating alternative institutions to, as you said, this control grid that we see, but also to becoming more knowledgeable, whether that's, um, you know, in uh, academic sense, philosophical sense, or a hands-on sense, learning gardening, learning permaculture, um, learning self-defense, um, just, you know, child care, all kinds of different things. And the, the general idea is to take a group of eight to ten people, ideally eight people, small groups that work well together because the the idea and the science behind it is that too little people it's ineffective and if you get too many then it also becomes less effective there's you know too many people trying to shift it in too many directions but eight seems to be a very ideal number that we've been working with so we're encouraging individuals to start free, um, forming freedom cells in their communities to find uh, however many like-minded people that you can it doesn't necessarily have to be eight if you don't have eight people yet you got to start somewhere <clears throat> so find the people that you know who care about the things that you do what's going on in the world but who are also willing to start taking steps to empowering themselves and having solutions in any sort of emergency preparation type situation, but also just working towards living a better life through learning about uh, self-reliance and, as we said, communal living, um, gardening, permaculture. These are all really cornerstones to what the Houston Freedom Cell has been working on. But there are some other ideas that other Freedom Cells have used, like getting everybody within the group um, able to do CPR, able to have medical knowledge, everybody in the group having three months worth of backup supply of food in case, you know, any sort of weather emergency or financial emergency, whatever it may be, um, having a form of encrypted communication or some way to communicate that is safe and protected, um, a plan for emergency. These are just, you know, some rough ideas that we've been working with, but ideally the concept could be used in any number of ways. And we're, we and a few other activists uh, around uh, the U.S. and really now we're starting to extend the network around the world it, are trying to just be the catalyst to push this idea. You know, we don't need to look into the political systems for answers. Instead, look to our own communities and start these small groups. And then the idea being that once you have your first freedom cell of eight people, everyone within that can go start a second freedom cell. Um, and then you have these larger cells starting to connect in a bigger network. You know, so first, maybe it's just a few communities and a few little cells spread out across the country, around the world. Uh, we use ideas like the Full Circle Project and um, other tools like that to connect and meet like-minded people. And then we start finding other groups. And I've already, you know, as I've started to talk about this publicly, I've already been contacted by people in New Zealand, all over the U.S., South America, you know, really just people who are already working on the ideas and saying, hey, we're doing this, we just call it something else, or, you know, this is a great idea, we're going to start now. And, uh, we really believe it's a powerful idea that can help us move forward. Yes, exactly. No, it, it feels exciting as I can um, picture that unfolding and the, de the whole sort of decentralization of power and yet bringing power back into your community simultaneously. That strikes me as exactly where we need to be. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your own group that you're involved with and how that's been progressing and particularly how you're able to maintain the commitment and the motivation? 
Absolutely, yeah. Maintaining motivation is of uh, utmost important. So as I said, I'm, I'm from Houston, Texas, here in the U.S., and um, I started working with the core group of people that we have now probably, <clears throat> I'd say, early spring of this year. Um, I am at the a benefit of I've been involved in a larger community group called the Houston Freethinkers that I started back in 2010. So I had already, you know, several hundred people of network of people that we work with to sort of reach out and say, who's ready to take this to the next level? You know, who wants to? Because the, the regular activist group, we do, you know, meetings and we have events, documentary screens. We do a lot of great community work. But, you know, the, the Freedom Cell is a whole other level of commitment, I think. And also because the other aspect, the way that we really hope that it will be useful in, in the future. I mean, if we're, when we're talking about pulling our, our resources and our power back from uh, the state, these institutions that have held us back, we have to recognize the need for, for community defensing and, you know, and how we can take care of ourselves and protect ourselves. And um, we believe that freedom cells and using a lot of technology that is available, different apps and tools that are just becoming readily available to everyone can be used as a way to also uh, call the members of your freedom cell together, for example, to stop an unjust CPS, Child Protective Services here in the U.S., taking away someone in the community's child for maybe for smoking a plant or something like that or something, you know, victimless and ridiculous or being able to come in together and defend your community in the, in the event that you have a violent criminal or a violent police officer or whoever it may be coming into your community and causing harm, being able to nonviolently and peacefully uh, show of unity and solidarity among your freedom, so among your community members to start establishing that, you know, we're taking our communities back and that we're not going to allow that to happen. So Freedom Cell is definitely a larger commitment is my point. And so from that bigger group of the Houston Freethinkers, I've been able to find, um, you know, eight to 10 or so people who are really interested in the Freedom Cell concept. As I said, we started meeting maybe five, six months ago. We practice regular forms of encrypted communication to discuss anything Freedom Cell related. Uh, for example, the video I did about Freedom Cells is out there on the internet. There's more and more, um, videos and interviews being talked about this as the concept grows, but there's nothing out there publicly that says, here are the minutes of our meeting that we held, you know, for the freedom cell. Not because we're doing anything illegal, but we do believe that it's important to uh, practice the principle of privacy and recognize that uh, in a free society, if you're not, if you don't have privacy, then you're really not free. Uh, so whether or not we recognize that, you know, the, these these governments around the world have spying, especially in the U.S., the NSA spying, and they have access to our information, we do believe it's important to practice a culture of security and to try to reclaim our power in the sense of our privacy and our security as well. So we practice that with encryption. We also have all been working on getting our three months worth of backup supply of food and having a, I don't like to call it a bug out bag, but an emergency preparedness bag is one way to think about it. You know, like I said, because we live in Houston, we get hurricanes, we get storms. It doesn't necessarily have to be a sort of end of the world scenario that you're preparing for, um, but just any type of emergency. Um, and again, if pe many people are worried about currency collapses and, you know, food running out at, at local markets and such, you know, so that's why we talk about having backup supply of food and having plans and having this core group of people to work on these ideas with that you know you can count on it. Because the, the key thing with Freedom Cells is that it's decentralized, so the power is diffused among the individuals involved, but also the knowledge is diffused uh, among the individuals. So what I mean by that, for example, last night we had our, our, our most recent Freedom Cell meeting. And we actually had some new folks come out. We kind of letting them get introduced to our group. And we might actually end up having to split up into two freedom cells because the numbers are getting close to 16 or so. And we want to try to keep that structure so things don't get disorganized. Um, but we were at the end of that meeting. Our next goal for the next time we meet, which is typically every two to three weeks or so, um, is to for every individual involved to learn different aspects. And we divided up different categories about permaculture. Because permaculture is going to be very important as we work towards building a homestead and a land project, this intentional community that we plan to build in 2017. So we divided that up. We're, we're all going to watch a documentary together, and in three weeks we're going to get back together and meet, and um, you know we'll check on, hey, how's everybody's bag coming? How is your food supply coming? Um, and let's see what we can teach each other about permaculture. So we come back, and everybody's just going to educate each other on all these different aspects. So again, the knowledge is diffused, the power is diffused. If there's ever an emergency situation or something goes wrong, you know that you have seven other people who are equally prepared and equally knowledgeable as you. So if somebody gets sick or somebody leaves, you know, the one person that if somebody is the one person who knows how to make a fire, the one person who knows how to do CPR, et cetera, and they leave the group or they get sick or 
ill or something, then all of a sudden the rest of the people are kind of useless when it comes to that. So we want to avoid that. We want the knowledge to be spread out among our group. Uh, so we've, as I said, we've been working on those goals. We work, we meet every two to three weeks. Met last night. We'll be meeting again in the coming weeks. We also have, as we're preparing to get our land project, we have, we're friends with another community member who lives just outside the city who has access to land and we're sort of using that as a staging ground before we actually buy the land that we will use for our community next year. So we, we, we kind of have that to use in the interim period to just go out there to camp out, to do, you know, just teach each other out, outdoor skills, to do a little bit of gardening out there, to learn about uh, permaculture experiments, you know, but we also think that there's as this idea of exiting, vacating the systems to create something new and beautiful. It, it has to involve us educating ourselves about how to be free again, how to reclaim our own power and to be less dependent on any external systems of control. But it also is to involve creation of new systems. So that's going to be the next phase that we really focus on in the future is um, how can we individually and as a group start to promote what is known as counter economic activity, you know, uh, activity outside of the typical mainstream economy that can allow us to, to gain our power back in that sense as well. Mm. well I like the sound of that, Derek. I, I like particularly that you're allowing for individual growth within the support of a, of a group, you know, that, that, that's, that, that's obviously essential. And um, a couple of questions that came to mind um, as you were speaking, because it does sound so... Um, sensible, you know, it's, it's practical and sensible and um, provides, I would imagine, a very good foundation, a very good basis to um, form, uh, you know, strong, resilient um, kinship, uh, family cell within your community before looking at perhaps um, areas of concern um, that people may have but don't feel strong enough to, to actually address. So, I think that's really interesting, and I wanted to ask you, um, you, you mentioned that you were, was it purchasing some land? So th this, is, this is with the idea of having uh, a, a community um, allotment for growing, or t tell us a bit more about how you envisage this land coming together, and if it's a purchase, or, or how, how does that happen? Do you collect money together, or how do you acquire the land? Sure. So I did another video, and I'll make sure to send that to you so you got, your audience can check it out, but it's called Launching a, a, a Homestead Project in Texas, where I sort of outlined that we, among the Freedom Cell, about, I'd say, a good half of the group, and as, as I said, we've got a few new people yesterday who are interested. We'll see you know, how consistent they become and if they are as committed as we are, but about half the group, uh, so four to five people, are interested and carrying this concept that we've been discussing of freedom cells and carrying it into an actual land project, you know, being able to uh, build a community that is based on these principles that we've been espousing. And in our community specifically, you know, what we're working on is promoting the ideas of agorism, which is, I talked about counter economics a moment ago, that's, you know, working outside of the mainstream economy to take your power back economically, whether that's using alternative currencies, creating new currencies, gift economy, barter economy, uh, you know, what, what have you. It just means when free people come together and they do business without a third party involvement, the government, corporations, anybody else getting involved and using that as a, a stepping stone to creating new institutions and, and new ways to achieve freedom and prosperity. So we are incorporating that aspect into uh, what we want to do. But the three, I sort of think of envision, envision this as a triangle. And of course, this is my individual view. I want to remind everyone that you know, in the freedom cell, everyone has a say. So we've all sort of discussed these ideas, but th these are my particular views. So what it looks like in the end will all depend on who those people are at the time that decide to, you know, when 2017 rolls around and we've all been preparing for this, whoever is there at that time and decides to build a community will then have a say in you know, what it looks like. But generally, I think these ideas are what we're working towards. Um, and so that, that cornerstone, one, I imagine one side of this uh, triangle being permaculture and sustainability, using that in all of our actions and all of the steps we take to using our land to um, to work with the earth rather than to be invasive, which is essentially what permaculture is about. And, you know, taking that in, into consideration in all of our steps when we're building things, when we're gardening, when we're, if we're bringing animals in, whatever it may be. So permaculture is going to be extremely important. The other, Another side of this uh, triangle would be 
to incorporate uh, mindfulness, you know, and what I mean by that is uh, meditation, you know, we would definitely want to encourage within our group, like a, a group meditation, but also um, sort of having training groups in nonviolent communication, which I encourage everyone to look into if you have not nonviolent communication, also known as compassionate communication, very, very knowledgeable tool developed by psychologist Marshall Rosenberg on how to, you know, have Nonviolent communication. I think what we're trying to create a nonviolent world. We have to think about the words that we use and uh, the way we communicate with our community members. And I've seen so many powerful ideas disintegrate because I feel a lack of communication, miscommunication, etc. And um, so we're going to make that an important part of our community as well, encouraging everyone to have some type of individual meditation and maybe you know regular meditations and discussion groups where we can sit down and really air out our ideas and make sure that. People feel like their needs are being met and their ideas are being heard so that we don't have any silliness, any ego get in the way of our, our vision to do something much bigger than ourselves. So permaculture, mindfulness, and as I mentioned, uh, agorism. But we've got sustainability of the earth. We've got sustainability of ourselves or of, of our actions, you know, the way we communicate with each other. And then the, the last sort of cornerstone is sometimes known as the non-aggression principle um, it was also known as the sovereignty of the individual by um, this philosopher, Josiah Warren. But it, all that really means is that you treat every individual the way you expect to be treated, you know, and as simple as that, that we are all free within this community to do what we please. You know, no one's going to tell you how to, uh, uh, you know, build your particular house, how to raise your child, you know, what you can put in your body. As long as everything is in line with, what you know, the, those first two steps, which are permaculture and mindfulness. Obviously, we're encouraging peaceful parenting. We're encouraging unschooling and really just a radical way of living. Uh, but we want to make sure that everybody knows that they are free as individuals to make their choices. You know, we want to come together as a group that um, does this voluntarily, that chooses to see this as a form of activism and promotion and inspiration to other people to show people that it is possible to live free within you know the paradigm that we exist that we don't have to run away to somewhere else some people may choose that you know we want to find some land we're planning to do this here in texas just maybe an hour or two hours outside of houston which is a gigantic city but we some of us still have business here but we want to be out you know out of the city but also not too far so that we could host markets we could host workshops and we could host you know uh, volunteers and and show people the things that we teach and that we learn from from each other so that's sort of the grand vision for what we're doing. It will be, the goal is at this point, all of us within the Freedom Cell who have, like I said, about half the group actually wants to financially be involved. The other half will be involved on a level that they're going to be there volunteering, learning, putting in time, energy, and uh, you know, volunteering generally to learn, but they might not necessarily be the ones signing any sort of paperwork. And in the video I address, you know, because for me, as somebody who tries to work as little as possible with these institutions that attempt to control us, I really don't like the idea of having to buy land, you know, from the, people, the, the state, the U.S. government, the Texas government, whatever it may be, because they have a monopoly on land, you know. But I also believe that in this vision of showing people that we can live free and in the process, creating new institutions is a worthy cause and is worth the... Uh, you know, the displeasure of having to pay the state a property tax once a year. And so our goal is to save up as much money as possible as we're looking. We're also working with some possible financiers of this project, some people who may want to be sponsors of this project. And we're just uh, doing our, you know, our best to continue educating ourselves, building up internally and looking for land and scouting towards, you know, spring 2017 to make a purchase. And our goal is that we'll find an individual that not have to go through a bank in any way, but find an individual who has land and believes in this project and is willing to allow us to do you know, a direct deal with that individual rather than mortgage out something through the bank or finance it through the bank. Yeah, sure. No, I, I um I hear the points of those triangle the triangle there very much in balance and uh, sort of providing a really essential base a solid base for everything else so i think that's really important for everyone to consider how they're providing that sort of cohesion amongst the group and and also the communication is so key so that's a great guideline there to look at and perhaps at some point um derek we can come back and look at that in a little bit more detail as well as agorism and um on the counter-economic side of this i think people will find really interesting to 
um, understand a little more about that. But um, I'd really like to ask you as well, on a practical level, how do, um, how do people tend to come across freedom cells in your area? Are you, are you, is it word of mouth or how are you um, enabling people to find you? So there's been a lot of progress being made since I first put out that video. And I plan to actually release an update video discussing a lot of this information we're talking about here. So you guys are actually getting you know, a preview before I, I release it through my own website. But, you know, we're growing immensely, both online and, uh, as I said, being contacted by other people around the world. And really, there, it does seem that Texas is a hotbed of activity for the freedom cell concept. I've been working with an activist in Austin, which is about three hours away from Houston, and they're actually having a meeting next week. They're starting to call their group the Central Texas Mutual Aid Society uh, is the name of their freedom cell. But we hosted a meetup two weeks ago in Austin. They had me come out and speak about what we're doing in Houston. And we had about 50 people come out to this event, you know, with full of questions and ideas and really excited. So there's a lot of momentum happening. So um, and we're also working with another group up in Detroit. Um, I just want to make sure that these people are credited for the work that they're doing. Uh, the Grand Rapids Autonomous Support System, those guys are doing great work. So all of us are sort of coalescing and come together. We did make a Facebook page recently. If you go to Facebook and just search Freedom Cells, we've been really trying to use that as a, as a main hub. And, of course, we're working with um, Matthew from the Community Connector to try to get sort of like a full circle project type website that can be the main hub for Freedom Cell, net, the Freedom Cell movement and also allow – these various uh, communities and circles to start interconnecting as well. Um, so that's the point we're at now is getting ready to really get a central website out there. We have the Facebook page. We'll be doing updates. There's meetings going on in Austin. There's another group that's getting going in Dallas, just further north of Houston. And we're going to continue to to meet and spread these ideas. And also I will be doing, I'm going to try to get something more, because right now the only thing out there are interviews and videos of me talking about it. I haven't written an essay yet on the concept of freedom cells, but that's something I'm working on. So we can have a real easy to understand breakdown of the concept in written form that we can share to all of our friends and family. Yeah, that, that will be so useful. So useful. Um, have you come across any sort of opposition yet? Any kind of authority that's uh, been standing in your way or do you expect to? How would you deal with that? Um, you know, at, at the point we're at now, for the most part, you know, free people are still allowed to gather in groups of eight, I think, you know, and uh, we still have that freedom. So we haven't run into too much trouble yet, but I think it's also because, um, you know, maybe I think as far as freedom cells, when we progress forward, let's see that these networks say that these networks continue to grow and the freedom cells are popping up all over the place. I think the point of concern where any sort of authorities would be uh, worried, at least publicly, you know, maybe behind the scenes, they're like, oh, no, the people are starting to organize, they're coming together, they're doing beautiful things. But I think that we'll see that sort of public resistance from any authority figures at the point, and this is something that I do believe will necessary, be necessary, and I don't say this to you know, scare anyone away, but I just think it's a reality that at the point when freedom cells and these networks become strong enough to start defending themselves against um, invading, you know, violent criminals, again, whether that's somebody in a government uniform or police or just a common street criminal. But the point whenever the people are able to start really organizing and using different apps like the Cell 411 app, look that up if you guys have not heard about that one. It's a great way to organize through uh, smartphones and apps if you use them. Um, but as these tools grow and as we're able to start really seeing like, okay, today the Houston Freedom Cell, they were able to build 10 different gardens around the city. Maybe they might start wondering, what's this Freedom Cell thing we keep hearing about? Or as, you know, one city pops up and they are able to peacefully defend themselves and defuse a violent situation with a police officer and avoid any deaths or harm on either side, when that starts happening, then maybe the authorities might be like, hey, we need to look into this concept. But at the end of the day, we're not asking anybody to do anything violent. We're not asking anybody to do anything illegal. We're just simply saying it's time to get back and to build our tribes and to do this in a way that is um, empathetic, compassionate, and allows for each of us to grow as individuals and to recognize the power that we hold. And through that process, we will see uh, freedom cells and the concept, whatever you want to call it, we will see it grow, and I believe we'll see something brand new created. So there's nothing that the authorities need to worry about unless they're afraid of uh, the people having power. No, I, I think you paint a great picture there, and... Um... I feel anyone that opposes it would just simply not be in their right mind and setting such a good example 
um, and demonstrating uh, the way forward in terms of everybody being able to live a life of abundance and generosity, I don't think there's going to be so much resistance. And if so, you're saying that you'll be prepared. And I think that's um, such a practical and, and such an encouraging um, view, Derek. And congratulations to you and, and all those involved in the different freedom cells. And um, yeah, do, do let's stay in touch, obviously, and um, we'll check in with each other. And anyone listening to um, this call now, this call to action, who would like to ask De uh, Derek anything or um, perhaps even suggest something, um, do please get in touch with us at um, the fullcircleproject.net, info at fullcircleproject.net, or directly with Derek. I'm sure you can find a way to contact um, you, Derek, on your site, is that true? The conscious resistance dot com? Yeah, and you, you can email me at Derek D E R R I C K at the conscious resistance dot com. I love to talk to people. I'm always excited to hear from new people and to share ideas and definitely we don't believe we're the first ones to try to get out there and go back to the land, so we're more than happy to take suggestions and ideas. Perfect. And we'll drop in some of those links that you mentioned, Derek, into the uh, into the YouTube box here so people can follow through with those suggestions, too. And, and I believe you have um, a, a book or two or three in the net, in the <laughs> in the pipeline. Is that true? Yeah, um, I'll just talk about that briefly. I So the website is The Conscious Resistance. It's the full title of The Conscious Resistance Network. It's just something that came to me four years ago and really trying to be a part of this larger movement that I think that we're all a part of. Um, and the book series started two years ago. It's also called The Conscious Resistance. And since we released the first book in April 2014, or 2015, excuse me, we realized that it's going to be a trilogy. Uh, so the first book is called The Conscious Resistance, Reflections on Anarchy and Spirituality. And it touches on a wide range of topics from meditation, psychedelics, anarchism, spirituality. It looks at the history of world religions and what they looked like before um, they were about control and what these various belief systems really ask people to do. Um, and just overall, just re-examining our world and asking people to consider what we call the conscious resistance. The second book is called Finding Freedom in an Age of Confusion. And where the conscious resistance, the first book, is what we consider to be the body of our work, the body of the philosophy, where it covers a whole lot of ground and really just tries to give people a primer on other areas of research. The second book is more of the heart, you know, it's the emotional center. So it's a set of essays that are really trying to re-empower people to recognize, for one, that you're not alone and that there are so many other people out there. And to just first look at your relationship to yourself, look at your relationship to your friends and your family, how sometimes as you're going through this awakening, trying to live as an activist and really question the nature of our world and reality itself, you can also often feel isolated, depressed, confused. And this is written for those people in that in that sort of state of mind and just, you know, to try to re-empower each of us. And the second half of that book has a collection of positive affirmations that me and my co-author John Vibes wrote and also some tips on meditation and some other tools that we think can be real helpful. And the third book, the final book in that series, will be out next April. Um, it's untitled so far, but basically everything we've discussed today and everything that I'm working on in my life right now is going to be going to the book. It's essentially going to be a how to go out and create conscious communities. You know, this is going to examine all the different aspects of what is a freedom cell and everything that we learn in the process of getting our land and, and what we can do on the land is basically going to go into this book. So the ups, the downs, the things that worked and the things that didn't, all that will make it in there along with some philosophy on why we think this way of life is important. So you can find all that, the, the two books um, on the consciousresistance.com slash books. And they're free to download. And if you enjoy it, you can purchase a copy and get a physical copy. Wow, that that's such a comprehensive and um, yeah, very much a full spectrum approach. So I'm very very keen to dig a little bit deeper on those things when um, you're able to come and visit us again here at the Full Circle Project. And I really look forward to it. Lots of strength and power to you and clarity in what you're doing, Derek. And thank you again. Thank you. I appreciate that. Bye bye.